Hi, Chris here. So this is uh, ULA's new Vulcan rocket. It's a relatively low cost, medium heavy uh, rocket capable of get launching things into high orbit. It also has a special feature that its engine, the main launch engine, is uh, fully recoverable. So if we look at this in KSP, we see that we've got uh, a separator and the main engine cluster is uh, separated away with radial parachutes activating and the parachutes activate at the same time. Now the real one they actually have an inline um, like a circular parachute obviously don't have that in KSP. Uh, they also have a trailing line go out to the diagram. So you've got a trailing line which is then picked up by a helicopter but uh, let's show you how it works. Right, so you set thrusters full we're going to gonna close these cargo bays So the first stage is uh, assisted to get just to get the rocket up to speed. We've got lots of boosters on the side, same as the Vulcan. Then after that, we have uh, the central main engine, which is going to take us most of the way up into orbit. Then that separates away. So we loot this uh, main engine is recovered, while the less valuable heavy fuel tanks are uh, just dumped. We then have a smaller engine to go up into uh, orbit, and that will take us all the way up into high orbit with enough fuel to burn to um, position any satellites we have. Right, so the boosters have got us up to speed, we're up to 350 now. The main engine is just going to maintain our speed while we're in the lower atmosphere. See, it's just about going okay, to keep us above 400. In rotation. Alright, I'm just going to go and show you now um, the separation of the booster stage. So there we go. And then the fuel tank separates. Have a look at this falling down. So the parachutes here have activated. This has got no controller at all in it. The parachutes activated at the same time it's separated. The separator was um, fixed so it's upside down, and that means that the separator has remained with the fuel tanks. So we've just we've got absolute minimum weight with this booster, so it falls nice and easy. It's beginning to fall now. Let's speed things up. Now we've separated the engine away at a slightly different time from the fuel tanks, and this gives a little bit of time for a little bit of time for things to move apart so they don't hit risk hitting uh, during the descent. Obviously, you know, ideally, you wouldn't be uh, dropping these things on top of your space center. <laughs> You'd need to be slightly downrange. I just activated a bit early so you could uh, have a look at it. See, it's nice and slow. We're moving at uh, 10 meters a second and landed perfectly. Right, so let's swap over to the heavier launch version. It's a much heavier configuration. Side we have an interplanetary shuttle. The booster stage is the same, so we've just changed this top stage to have a Mark III cargo base. We've also added a little extra stabilizer because we're quite top heavy now. So let's send this one up. So the main problem uh, with the rocket is you actually have so much delta V in the first stage that you actually send it completely out of the atmosphere and it has to, the engine well, after it separates is going to have to go through the entire re-entry process um, which obviously since it doesn't have any heat shielding is going to cause it to be destroyed 
So the main problem is the booster stage is actually too good. Um. <laughs> Okay, obviously we're traveling a little bit slower now. This is a lot heavier. This is about as heavy a payload as we can possibly fit onto this rocket. Um, you can see that we can still get into high orbit. Oh, uh, that collision there appears to have been with one of the parachutes. Three should be plenty though. Yeah, we've lost that parachute. So we've only got three parachutes left now. It's not really a problem. So let's bring it around to rotate. Right, so I'm trying to get as much possible uh, speed towards the orbit before we leave the atmosphere. So we can get rid of all of this extra fuel. So I'm just going to bring it down to 90 because we're wanting to separate off this uh, engine before we leave the atmosphere. Okay, there we go. So there goes the, let it move a little bit off. Now we're not at full orbital velocity, so the re-entry heat shouldn't be too bad, but uh Right, so we've got a little problem with the engine vector rating inside. So let's just move this engine down there. So those engines are going to travel relatively slowly, they're going to re-enter at about 2,000 meters a second, which is, mm, it might survive. 